All right, I'll call the Wellington Board of Education Curriculum Committee meeting it's to order. It's April 20th, 3.33 uh, p.m. We really only have one item today that's uh, to discuss, and that's the overview of the math curriculum. And so we have um, Dr. Aaron Conley here. We have Heidi F. Rizmo, math coach. Um, and then right now we have Ann and Laura as board members. So um, Aaron, you can share your screen and jump right in if you want. And again, this is meant to be the, the kickoff, just like we've done for every content area so far. And then uh, board members, you have uh, some fun reading to do once we uh, mm -hmm. pass things off to you. You guys can hear me okay and see my screen? Perfect. Yep. All right, so this is just going to be kind of the overview uh, background in terms of choosing the illustrative math program and how we embedded it into the Willington Public Schools uh, written curriculum. And I do have Heidi, um, our math coach here as well, so I'm sure she'll she can chime in with some of the questions or Heidi, if there's anything I'm missing as I'm presenting, feel free to just kind of uh, jump in. Okay. Um, so I'm going to start with the shifts. I know many of you guys are educators, so this is not going to be new news for you, but uh, I wanted to make sure for um, the public or anyone who might be watching this that they understand the shifts uh, in mathematical instruction from when we have probably were taught math to the way we teach math nowadays. Um, so starting with the simple fact that tip, the typical math instruction back when we were growing up, um, I could speak to myself, uh, and it was really memorization for flu, especially around fluency, but memorization of facts and, um, and, and, and or concepts or formulas, and then regurgitation. So, or our application of those, which through research and over time, we've learned that actually we go through a process uh, as we learn. And the best way to, is starting with the concrete, which there's a picture here you can see where you, you the concrete form is you, manipulatives or hands on uh, that that most basic component, moving that from the concrete to the pictorial representation of the concrete, which you can see here, this is a tape diagram, the pictorial here, and then eventually, uh, then applying that understanding to an abstract concept, which is which we or equations um, or numbers. So really kind of moving through that process rather than kind of those index flashcards where you're just memorizing and regurgitating. So that's one really um, important shift to note. The other is, again, when we talk about fluency, again, we, we always, we think mathematical fluency is memorization of facts. And really, we've gone to uh, fluency, changing the definition of fluency, you can see over here in the right hand corner, being the procedural fluency refers to the knowledge of procedures, knowledge of when and how to use them appropriately, and skill in performing them flexibly, accurately, and efficiently. So it's no longer just about speed, but rather about understanding when to use a certain formula or strategy or concept, being efficient with it, um, and being accurate with it. So all three of those concepts and being flexible. So really understanding that there's multiple processes or multiple pathways to an answer. Um, so again, we talk about fluency now being built through number sense, flexibility, accuracy, and effic efficiency. Um, fluency within the illustrative math program is built within and across grades through intentional and embedded tasks. Um, and through their questioning within lessons so that students, le student, well, students learn to be flexible with and evaluate appropriate methods in parallel and in unison with developing their accuracy and efficiency with fact fluency. So, for example, um, actually, Heidi, do you want to, or I'm going to speak to, do you want to speak to that example? Um, one of the first grade teachers was super excited the other day about a number talk that she did that really demonstrates this aspect right here. Um, but I'm gonna have Heidi speak a little bit to that. Yeah, so in a um, a first grade teacher sent us this picture about how um, she was having the kids solve mental addition problems. And they said, she asked them how they solved it mentally. And they came up with about five or six different strategies without her pre-teaching any of them on how to do it. And in first grade, they were doing things like decomposing numbers, like if it was three plus seven, Oh no, that's that equals hold on. It was like five plus seven. They would take the five and change it to a three and a two, and then do ten, the ten plus two. So the fact that even after only one year, like not even a year, the students are getting are able to like 
have that number sense is really exciting. She was very excited when she sent it to me too. Um, and then with the fluency piece, I was also going to add that it's still about like, they'll, they'll still be memorization, not like rote memorization flashcards, like Aaron was saying, but the, the expectation is still that they're able to like repeat facts quickly once they get to older grades. It's just more about having strategies to like, when you're not sure about what a fact is, oh, I don't know what eight times eight is. So I can double, double, double the other factor. So eventually, yeah, the goal is to memorize. It's just not through a rote way. Like we're, we're used to. Yeah. yeah. And I don't know if you can see this, but this is, at, uh, does it blur? It blurs. Let me see if I. You're sharing your screen with the. the oh, so, slide show, so that's right. really hard to see. Okay. Um. So anyways, I was going to show you what she sent us, but it, it, the strategies the kids were using specifically were making fives, decomposing or composing fives, tens, using doubles as a strategy and then doubles plus one. So they really incorporated quite a few strategies uh, for first grade to Very just cool. to get to how um how it really builds that number sense and fluency within the con while you build the concept understanding too within I am. And she mentioned they were very engaged and ready to share their ideas too. Um, the, and then the last piece is really methodology. So pedagogy around the, and how we teach. So again, most of when we were growing up, most of the instruction we we were, uh, while we were in the classroom was what we would call direct instruction where teachers relay uh, information to the students um, and or model uh, through a gradual release process where it's kind of like the teacher does, then we do together, and then eventually the students will do it and their, their mastery comes through practice. So it's just repetitive practice. We have this uh, program, um, as well as our science program, science is, is inquiry based, um, shifts to problem based learning, which is rooted in inquiry. So it's really capitalizing on students' uh, curiosity and it uses the inquiry based learning model where students are solving problems. So they're provided a problem that they need to collaboratively work through. Um, this process builds a myriad of 21st century skills. Um, for instance, collaboration, problem solving, perseverance, communication, because they need to be able to communicate clearly their ideas, um, their thoughts, and explain their thinking. Uh, creativity, because as you can see, they're using multiple pathways, strategies, um, and processes. But this is a big shift because you won't really, you when you walk into a math classroom uh, with that's problem-based learning um, at, or the IM classroom, you're going to, you're not going to see the teacher as sage on the stage. They're not going to be sitting there at the board uh, showing the kids what to do. You're, you should be seeing the teacher walking around facilitating discourse within and amongst kids, uh, adding, a, asking very intentional questions that help students or guide students to their understanding, um, but it is a huge shift in what the classroom and the roles of the teacher and the students look like. It becomes a much more student-centered approach. So those, I believe, so those are the major shifts um, that as we think about and look at kind of the math classroom today versus, you know, where we probably, you know, how we grew up with math. Uh, the, I linked here um, some real, some content, if you can go through any of these, the illustrative math links. So if you'd like to learn more about these different grade bands, uh, they go right to the IM site. Here's a, an 18 minute video all, that goes pretty deeply into the IM K5 math. So if you want to see kind of what the materials look like, well, you can also do that another way, but this is a great resource. Um, it taught down here, you can kind of get some more information as well around IM K5 math program. We're going to talk about some of these things, but you can see here that it meets all of the ed reports, um, perfect scores in two out of the three areas and, and 25 out of 27. So really close to being perfect in all three areas. Um, but there's some, and then the authors are down below. So uh, definitely some resources linked within here, uh, similar for six, eight, so again, another video for six, eight. And then I did link the nine through 12 because we do utilize the algebra, the algebra um, from the ninth grade program. So that that is one uh, we do kind of branch into there too. But so for any further information, feel free to explore those links um, and watch those videos. So why did we choose I am? How did we get to this point of choosing I am as a program, as our major resource uh, for our mathematical curriculum? Uh, and it's 
First of all, it, as you saw in Ed reports, it is extremely highly rated. Um, it is uh, has almost perfect. It has perfect scores in two of the three domains and a very close to perfect score in that third domain. It's also it's grounded in best practices for effective mathematics instruction. Uh, again, we talked about that problem based learning, which is is really critical in in getting to our portrait of their graduate skills in conjunction with understanding math content and really preparing our students for the 21st century. Um, the programs are rooted in, again, the pedagogical and methodology. It is very rigorous and standards aligned as well. Um, I will say having written and seen the program from K through eight, I, I, Heidi knows all the teachers have been hearing me. I am even more sold on the curriculum because I've seen this really intentional spiral of the decisions they make to teach concepts really um, capitalize on what I call blue lines, the schema that kids have. So for example, when they start to teach fractions in second grade, they do it by using clocks. So they talk about half past an hour. So they're, they're, they're teaching time and fractions, but they're doing it through phrases kids have already heard. Half past and quarter past are the two they talk about. So they, they are just so intentional about how they group concepts um, and then how they spiral them and, and have the learning progressions go throughout the grades. There was an expert authoring team, which you can look further into on those links I, I um, had added. And, and then lastly, upon my arrival, um, when I first came in last year, I interviewed all the staff members uh, six through eight, because six through eight was already using illustrative math before I even came to Willington. And in my uh, intake, inter or as I talked to all the teachers through my interviews, the math department really spoke very highly of how much they liked this program. So when we spoke to the teachers, it was kind of a no-brainer to just go K-8 so that it was, um, we had the same uh, major resource for kindergarten through eighth grade. But those were the major uh, reasoning points for why I am. Heidi, I don't know if you want to add anything. Yeah, I was just going to add, thank you. I was just going to add for that last one with six through eight, using it already. Um, in my last district uh, last year was trying to, um, I was leading a committee to choose a math program as well. And we reached out to other districts in the area in Eastern Connecticut as well. And there are very few K through eight or K through 12 programs out there. A lot of programs are K through five or six through eight. So this was like an added benefit that there was some, it's, you know, a lot of times like districts will say, oh, this, our K through five program is really strong, but our six through eight isn't so as great. So it was nice to have something also that was cohesive throughout the whole district. Thank you. Um, so IM is, is interesting because it was developed, I believe it was developed actually as an open resource similar to our science. So it is actually available free um, through the Kendall Hunt website, uh, and so the, which is a great asset so could, because anyone in the community or the public can access many of these resources, including the curriculum, may, many of the resources we're using for the curriculum. So uh, the, both these pictures link to the Kendall Hunt website. Um, when you go there, you can choose either the K-5 math curriculum, uh, the 6-8, um, there is an accelerated version so that you can differentiate within the middle school um, or the algebra and the nine through 12 learning. But I'm just going to, for the sake of launching, go to K-5. You can see here that there's family materials that families, again, can just, you can come in here and see. So let's say you have a kindergarten, you can go to kindergarten, you know that we're in unit two. And this tells you exactly each kind of um, section of the unit, what they're working on, exactly how we're, they're being taught. So in conceptually, you know, whether it's pictorial uh, or a concrete pictorial or abstract. Um, and then they also give tips for families to what to do at home. If you're interested, let's say, uh, instead of doing the family friendly one, you wanted to see what they're actually doing in their classrooms, you can go into the same unit. Here is um, the, this is actually what the teacher uh, unit, teacher side looks like. So here's the scope and sequence for all of kindergarten. You can go through the entire, what, what words they're going to learn about, what lessons, what standards are tied to what lessons. Um, again, this is the teacher side. So it's very um, heavy with educational jargon, but I know that sometimes people are curious as to what the actual, and these are the lesson plans. So these are the actual lesson plans that teachers are following. Um, you are limited without uh, signing up with an email in the resources link. 
you don't, you cannot always access. So you have to register or sign in to access all of the resources, but you still can see the lesson plans and the general, you know, kind of generally what lesson is. So if a student's ever absent, it is actually really easy to go in and say, oh, you missed this lesson. Here's where the lesson is. Um, and again, this is all free and accessible um, online through these links. Here's, oops, down here are the directions um, in terms of getting to where you want to access. And another benefit to it all being free as well is is that you know teachers as they're trying to fill you know gaps that exist they can access any grade level so they don't have to go and like you know try and find where it is or go talk to another teacher even especially from like fourth and fifth grade when they're in different buildings it's been really nice for them to be able to go back to certain lessons and concepts in there too. Yeah, and actually there's another thing that I didn't put in here, um, but since many of you guys are educators, they have a wonderful, what they call like a dependency diagram, and what it shows you is, you know, for kindergarten, um, actually, they might have, let me see, they might actually have it uh, in the, I don't know, I'd have to find it, but what happens is, um, it shows you kind of for unit five, what they would have had to master or understand in previous grades specific by lesson. So it'll be, it, it will really say like third grade unit two, lesson five, um, you know, this concept it should have, they have to have an understanding of this before they can move to this. So it helps you naturally differentiate for the students as well and help fill gaps. We've been using a lot of that for this year, like majorly, we've been really capitalizing on those. Yeah, especially since they haven't had this yet. So it's not like repeating the same thing they did last year as of this first year anyway. Mm -hmm. um, so our math curriculum, what does our, uh, the Willington Public Schools math curriculum entail? Again, illustrative math is our major resource. Um, we do use a uh, printed teacher. Most of the teachers do have printed guides and student workbooks, but we, they also have access to that online uh, program. Some teachers choose to only use the online component. Um, it's kind of, you know, based on their preference. Written documents uh, translate. We're going to see them in just a minute, but I basically the written curriculum documents translate the material from the IM program. Um, both the K five, six, eight, and algebra uh, unit or modules or in grade levels um, are translated into our template that you guys approved uh, for ELA. And just to give you an idea, as I walk through again, I, I will walk through these um, in a minute. But the unit descriptions. Um, well, actually, I'm going to pull one up. It's going to be easier to walk through this way, I think. So these unit descriptions right here. These were, um, these are pulled verbatim from illustrative math. So as I, you saw kind of the description overview for the units, these are just copy and pasted. So those are verbatim from the unit, uh, the units online um, or unit books. Um, here are the standards, again, priority and supporting. Many of the units in IM focus solely like as priority standards because they go really deep within the concepts. So you'll see a, many of these units have many bolded standards because they, they really are considered priority for the unit. Uh, in terms of the K, K5 has a little bit of a different setup than 6-8 in terms of centers. So K5 has centers, 6-8 do not have centers as part of their programming or part of their routines. Um, so you'll see in the K-5 documents that over here, there's uh, addressing and supporting centers. So, and there's different stages of a center. So for instance, here, check it off has up, up, for, up to here is three, three stages. The third stage is hitting a priority standard. However, stages one and two are embedded within the unit um, and can be utilized for differentiation purposes, but they are supporting. So they may have been a previous grade unit or it could just be a, a previous unit within the grade or something that the students have had some practice with, but it's not a priority for this unit. So just to give an understanding of the addressing and supporting um, centers. Materials and resources, um, vocabulary are listed here. These are very specific vocabulary terms. Um, essential questions and big ideas are something I create. I derived from the illustrative math program. So these are not something they provided. Um, I utilized, uh, after I wrote the unit, would utilize my understanding of what, what were these major arch, big kind of concepts, thoughts, and ideas that these units are getting at. And so I created these essential questions and big ideas from the unit. I derived them from the unit. So these 
are not something I am provided. These are something I did create from that information. Our assessments are listed uh, again by, and this is very similar to the templates you've all seen, the formative, summative, diagnostic, and benchmark assessments. Um, and so how students are getting assessed. You'll see in the upper grades, um, because the middle school teachers, especially our eighth grade teacher, has been teaching this for quite a few years. Um, she's pretty familiar with it. So she kind of knows some adjustments that she wanted to make. And one of the ones she's been working on are creating performance tasks that are uh, more connected to real life um, and a little bit more authentic. Um, and, and then doing a few adjustments to the assessments as well. So if they're creating or revising assessments, though you might see those linked in the, this section um, with some of the seventh and eighth grade documents. So just in case you see something different, that's why you might see that. And then interdisciplinary, this column is still empty. Um, this will get filled as teachers become more familiar. And then as we move into project-based learning, because they'll start to make more connections. But this is something that as we build and develop programmatically across subject areas, that this will, this will uh, get filled in within time. And then the template, again, similar to what you guys have already seen, uh, the objectives, pretty much come from the illustrative math program. Uh, they have kind of a line that usually talks about what the focus of the lesson is. So these are mostly from those. If we're, if they didn't necessarily, if, if it, I was reading those sentences that I am had and they kind of didn't make much sense or I thought they weren't super kid friendly, I reworded them. Um, so these are a combination of being verbatim from I am as well as myself rewording a few. Um, the lesson is, just identify what lesson they're teaching. Um, they would follow it in their book. What centers to focus on? We did talk about, um, as we roll this out, we asked uh, our goal, Heidi, or my, hmm, we haven't had this conversation a while. I think we said centers three times a week. Is that what we were shooting for? Um, the program has the centers for K through two embedded in That's the great. lesson. So they don't need extra time. Although I think a lot of times they don't get to them and end up wanting the extra time, but three through five, they recommend centers twice a week for 20 minutes each, each session. Yep. So we, that's something we are working. Some, some grade levels were ready to try them this year. We were really focused on getting the, it just getting them familiar with the new pedagogy um, and the new, the new practices and the new curriculum. So we didn't, some are ready for centers, but this is, that's going to be what we focus on next year. And then this is something I actually, so these are created by me, again, derived from the program. So part of uh, something I'm really, really very particular about is what does mastery of the objective look like? And I feel far too often, it, we kind of leave it for like, mm, it's not very clear or explicit. So I really wanted to say like, as kids are doing this and you know, this is your objective, what are you looking for? How do you know that students are progressing or mastering these objectives? So what I did is, as I looked through each lesson, I kind of took apart, what are you looking for and listening for? So what are you gonna see students doing? And what are you gonna hear them talking about um, to know that they are actually making progress or mastering standards? So this this actually is what took me forever and ever, but I, I do think they're gonna be really uh, beneficial for teachers. So it, they do get, um, and you'll see, I'm gonna show you some upper grades too. They get more explicit. Um, and they build upon each other. So you'll see um, each lesson kind of adds another bullet or two, depending on what they're focusing on. Um, and I'm just going to show you that. Here's a seventh grade example. Um, this is on rational number arithmetic. So again, very similar setup. You'll see there's no centers in these because um, this is an upper grade but same uh, essential questions and big ideas. Here, this is what I was talking about where there's some uh, quizzes uh, and uh, assessments listed in here. The other piece to the um, six through eight modules is they don't all have checkpoints um, or mid unit uh, assessments. So that you'll see here, these uh, checkpoints and quizzes are, the teachers are also developing some of these because they, they didn't want to teach a whole unit and then find out at the end, um, wow, there's all these things that the kids were struggling with. So they're creating kind of these more um, frequent checkpoints so that they can address it and get on it sooner. And again, the, the elementary version has those already built in. These are the six or eight units. 
And just to give you an idea what the cool down, like, or look for, and you can see here, like a look for and listen for by, by lesson five, you can see, you know, what they look for kind of at the upper grades here. So just clarification, the, the assessments that you're creating, what you're looking for, what you're listening for, this is the upper grades? This one is. What you just All said? But all of them, every grade has the cool down, look for and listen for. So the cool down is the activity in IM. And so what I did, as I said, as I, I kind of di dissected that cool down and said, how are you going to know if they okay. are doing this right? So that's, these are the kind of what you're looking for and listening for within the cool downs. Okay. So you added that to make it yeah, easier for the teachers to know if they've met um, the objective. Okay. Yeah. Okay, yeah. And, speci and specifically, Laura, is because, you know, so often it's like you, especially in math, we're accustomed to looking and saying, oh, right answer, wrong answer. Yeah. They understand it because it's the right answer or they don't because it's the wrong answer. And quite, quite frequently, they might actually understand a good majority and have made a small error. So this is where these help you get to instead of just looking at your final answer or final outcome on the cool down kind of getting to like, what are you listening for throughout the lesson, right? What are you listening for while they're doing this activity? Or what are you looking for to know that even if they have the wrong answer, that they might still have mastered this objective? Right. I, lo I love that you have the listening for. That's thanks. That's great, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah, I was actually having a, a, a talk with um, uh, Mansfield and Candace was like, I love that I'm taking that too. <laughs> so, uh. All right, so I think that's that's the seventh grade. Let me go back here and I think those are those are the major components. Um, so that's that's the written curriculum. I don't think there's there's no other aspects of that. So I'm going to pause here because I know that was a lot of information, <laughs> and open the floor for questions and comments. Okay, I had I had a I had a couple. Um... My first one, I think you pretty much, well, you answered part of it. I, because I was wondering how, like, what were you using before this? It sounds like six through eight. I think this has been used for a while, hasn't it? Because yep. it, it sounded very familiar to me. I think this is the um, fifth year. Yeah. that they're using Okay. It. So it's actually after I was gone. Um, what, what were you using? What was being used for elementary? Um, so, uh, I believe Erica, Erica had created a curriculum. Um, it was kind of a homegrown. It used a few different major resources, but predominantly she, I believe she pulled, she pulled from, um, the Stanford math program. Uh, and then really, and amongst some other, I think she had some Eureka math in there, but it was, it was a homegrown curriculum that Erica had built. Okay. For the this, did, this did not exist at that time. Okay. Correct. Yeah. Correct. She um, used the the New York um, Eureka, yeah, the New York, yeah, Engage New York, which is Engage Eureka. New York, thank you. Yeah, same. And then I'm wondering um, about the other feeder schools to EO and EO. What are what are Mansfield and and Ashford using? If you know, but just yep, I be I believe I just talked to Candace, so I know they're in the process of adopting something. Um, I believe she was looking at IM. I think they might be going with uh, Desmos or Gizmos, which is IM, but online. It's just, it's it, it has uh, some other simulate errors. I shouldn't say it is IM. It's rooted in IM and they call it aligned and designed uh, with IM, but it's not like I am, I don't know if it's IM certified necessarily, but they if you will you Laura, you probably know gizmos from science I do know gizmos <laughs> yeah so it's the same same program but with math content basically okay. and before uh, like they're still k through five i know mansfield and i believe they still are using bridges um which is very similar to i am it's only k through five though so that's and they have no plans to expand so yeah. and ashford is moving i believe doing i am i believe gabby says so too yeah. doing i am and then you said, um, as far as the high school, you're using the algebra for the eighth grade, you know, algebra students. I'm wondering, do I mean, does it have uh, programs going all the way up to calculus? Is it? No, only algebra one, algebra two, and geometry. And geometry. And I, right. I think they are using. I don't know about EO Smith. I, I think there's. I know they've been doing some changes to their math 
you know, program lately, but I'm not sure exactly what they use for those higher level maths. Just, yeah. just thinking about that articulation yeah. um, going up there. Do you have anything and jump in? <laughs> I, don't, I don't want to dominate. Was that a no? I, I... No, I'm, I'm, I'm doing well listening. <laughs> I haven't had any questions yet. Um, I did I did teach bridges when I was still in Mansfield, so they've had it for more than 10 years. <laughs> so anyway. Okay. And, and this isn't curriculum related, but what, well, it is connected to the algebra, but there has been, and Heidi has worked with, um, I believe it was April or April and Stacy are seventh and eighth grade math teachers this year, along with um, kind of in collaboration with EO for placement around and getting a, a placement for algebra and being really intentional uh, around that decision of who we place, tracking kind of how they do within it, um, but a lot of conversation and work around that. Um, and the, and I will say I know Heidi and uh, the teachers have all come to me very excited about this work, the work that they've done, and. Um, you know, kind of that process. Great. Another um, thing, oh, sorry, go ahead. You go first. No, 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 you go ahead. <laughs> I was just gonna add, it wasn't related to the question, but I think since you mentioned high school and eighth grade, um, it also they're coming out with a pre-K program um, soon. They're in the process yeah. of doing it. And um, our pre-K teacher is very excited about that. She's already been pulling some of the easiest K activities. So that's also another benefit. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Right. The, the other question I had, and, and, you, and, you, and you pretty much answered it, um, but I just want to kind of point out, because I was wondering, like, this program sounds really good. Love that it's free. It's online, you know, for for the district, but also that people, you know, parents have access to activities to help. They can see exactly where their child is in units, et cetera. So then I, I'm sitting there wondering, so what what have you done, right? So I, you know, my question was kind of like, like, how have um how have you needed? I was wondering what you've added and done, and you and you answered that right with with um, coming up with the essential question, big ideas, uh, kind of filling in those things, and especially with the assessments. Um, and and I can see where that would be very time intensive to take each of those and think, what is it that you're looking for? What are you listening for? To go along with that, I'm wondering. Um, have you come across any of these that you felt needed to be adapted or changed in any way to kind of fit with Willington or, or is it, or is it just, they're good? I'm going to pass that to Heidi. Um, <laughs> so I think, um, I know, so because of like, you know, COVID and there's, you know, there being gaps, I am actually does have adaptive units on their own that we've been using. Um, a couple other things that I've been working on with some of the teachers this year is when we add things, like I think any program, you're going to have to occasionally add something, tweak something, and it depends on the kids you have in front of you. So it's always going to look a little different, but I was really impressed with like going into third grade the other day, because I, at the beginning of the year, I felt like it was a lot of like, you know, worksheets, worksheets, worksheets that weren't aligned. And I went into two of the classrooms yesterday and they were doing like, you know, um, they were adding in things like it was fractions on a number line and fractions on a number line is a tool. It's not a separate concept. It's a tool to understand fractions. So they, one of them had like an interactive number line on her floor. The other one was like folding sentence strips. So I think, yes, there are things that we have to add in and we're kind of discovering them this first year, especially with, you know, some of the gaps that we have. I think that a lot of the teachers are getting used to adding more adding more things that are in alignment with the IM philosophy for sure, even after not even one year. So Laura, this is a really, really popular math program too. So the opportunity to ask questions and live this with other districts. And you asked about Ashford and Mansfield a moment ago, this is, you know, a conversation that we can now have with many, many districts, um, which is great. Um, there are professionals that we can bring in if we have additional questions that go beyond what, you know, the scope of either our knowledge or we just need more hands on deck. Obviously, Heidi is one person, Aaron's one person. So when we talk about, you know, getting people in the classrooms to support, you can find that with this program, whereas some of the other programs, you just can't find that. It's you're, you're trying to build capacity within district and that's what you've got. 
or you've got the one and done PD sessions, which is is not really good. I think the other thing that's important with this is, um, and I don't know why other other programs don't do this, but you want that continuity mm -hmm. K through eight. Mm -hmm. um, and so we were kind of waiting, waiting, waiting for that elementary uh, program to to be written. And we knew they were working on it. And that's why Erica was kind of patching. Um, but now that it's there, I mean, even with the COVID piece that Heidi just shared, we can loop things back in because it's a consistent program. Mm -hmm. um, and I think there's real power in that. Um, and, and the, whether it's, you know, how vocabulary is used in the program and by teachers, um, and just a consistent approach. The thing that I also want to say that you chimed in about, so what did you do, Aaron and in, in Heidi in the writing piece? I think that's important is that, um, is also the consistency in our curriculum now in approach and writing. And that's really, really important. So take a brand new teacher to Wellington, right? And they are now looking at one type of model. They're looking, whether it's ELA or science you've now seen, now math is the same framework, right? So where am I looking for the big ideas? Where do I look for assessments? All of that consistency is really, really important, I think, for new people coming in. And I really feel for elementary teachers in this that have all of the content areas um, and let's make it as easy as we can for them to make sure they understand the resources and know how to follow it and what to look in and then how to add feedback for the future. So just, I think those are my, my points, I think that are important to me in the grand scheme of this. And I completely agree with you. I think, you know, that that's, that's a big deal, putting it all into a template that is consistent and as you said, especially for your new teachers and especially for elementary, which I have the utmost respect for elementary, two years in fourth grade. And I said, get me back to middle school where I'm just taking <laughs> science. <laughs> it is a huge job. Um, um, okay. I was just going to, there was one, a couple, just a couple more things I was going to share. So I wanted to go back to this slide. Um, around professional development uh, and building off something, uh, what Phil had said too. Uh, Phil had mentioned, um, you know, the, oh, I think I can I see you, but um, he had mentioned, you know, the fact that it's a popular program. So you, we have a lot of resources available that includes professional development. So this year uh, we've, we're, Heidi was new to us this year, but she has been an amazing asset. Um, I've heard from pretty much every teacher she's worked with that, it phrase in some way, shape, or form. Um, and so she's been working with the teachers, really focusing on shifting their pedagogy from that direct instruction to problem-based learning, uh, differentiation. She's worked heavily with teachers on how do we differentiate? How do we meet them where they are right now, especially with the COVID gaps and a new curriculum? That's a double whammy. Um, and working with, with them on that, uh, math, working on mathematical practices, the timing of their lessons. How do I get this all in? Because that can be difficult when you shift to a problem-based uh, format and how do we include center? So she's really, and she's been taking a very individualized approach with teachers kind of meeting where they are and getting them to per, really build their capacity um, from wherever they started. Uh, we have had CREC. So CREC did, we did, uh, if you don't remember, we did put that in the budget last year. So they have provided the initial rollout uh, the beginning of this year, as well as we had four online sessions throughout this year with them, which were around two hours each which we uh, worked with Lindsay from CREC to design based on what the teachers were saying they needed, based on what Heidi was, what we were observing in classrooms that they needed. And so we did uh, really personalize those professional development sessions throughout this year. That's and a plug for those early release days, by the way. Yes. Yep. So that's what we used those four of them for. Um, and then for next year, we kind of decided, did we want to go back and use kind of capitalize, use CREC again? Um, it, or, you know, what other options do we have to really build teacher and school, school the both schools capacity around this program and this curriculum? And as Heidi and I talked through, we found that IM has a certified training. I don't know if you guys are aware of this, but Heidi is actually in her, in a PhD program for mathematics. <laughs> so we have a really like we have a great asset right here um so I, we kind of figured why not capitalize on that and for this for less money than we would have been getting paying crack we can train her 
so that she is an IM certified trainer. However, this is a national training program. Um, so it is a highly competitive process, but Heidi is working on her application and hopefully we'll hopefully that will come to fruition. Um, but that is kind of our plan moving forward. Uh, that's we're crossing our fingers that that happens because then we will have a nationally certified IM trainer on our staff. Fabulous. That's exciting. Yeah. And then the last thing was just um, when you review, which I will share these tomorrow with you. I just, uh, I just need to download them into PDFs um, and then get them in a folder so I could share all the documents with you. Uh, but as you review, if you could kind of use these, uh, this as your focus, you know, is the organization and content reasonable? Um, is the content tied to and supportive of your goals and our POG work um, and any edits that you might notice? Um, and then I did not do anything with methods this time around because you remember ELA, we were kind of pulling from different places due to the research and intentionality behind I am they, they did so much with methodology the, and pedagogy that I don't want that we're not touching that we're we're utilizing what they have built on um and then any other feedback or questions you might have okay Erin what's the POG work portrait of the graduate oh thank you okay thank you And I can just stop sharing. Do you guys? Right, that's good. That's a nice focus. Mm -hmm. That's helpful to have that to look for. Any final questions, comments? Oh, as Tracy jumps in for Tracy. <laughs> <laughs> are you when we present this to the board, Aaron? Are you going to go over a lot of this with them too? Yeah. I think it's a wonderful. It's it yeah. really helpful to understand the history and the we'll um, do the same kickoff and that we've done for all the others so when we introduce you know ela we do the kickoff we do the same thing for science we'll do the same thing for each of the content areas that way <laughs> they have some background knowledge hi tracy um mm -hmm. and really have a con you know the idea of where this is coming from um mm -hmm. and really before reviewing because yeah. if you don't have that back, just like you, right? We are doing yeah. the same thing with you. We want you to have the background of why this is done the way it's done. Um, mm -hmm. And now you can, with that lens, go and review the curriculum, right? Um, and provide feedback. So we'll do the same thing for the board when it gets to that time. Excellent. Thank you. Tracy, we literally were just, I think, wrapping up. Sorry. Um, it's okay. It's recorded. You're muted. You're muted. It's okay. You're rec you, it, this is recorded and this is just high level overview. Um, and so um, it's the same format that we've had. Erin will share her PowerPoint presentation and all the documents tomorrow. Um, and then she just shared at the and the and Erin, when you share that, the focus will be on there, right? So yes. That's the last slide. Yeah. The last slide. Um, so there's a few things that she shared on there, Tracy, that as far as um, when you review yourselves, just some focus points to, to look for and make sure you really feel like it's solid. Um, and so that's on the presentation as well. So um, you didn't miss much. Don't want, don't stress. Mm -hmm. No, I apologize. My, I'm just um, in crunch time with my Orton Gillingham program with an exam due and all sorts of things. And it fell by the wayside. <laughs> So no happened. problem. No yeah. problem. That's a wonderful thing about recording. <laughs> and this really, is the overview. So you're really going to be is. able to review and ask questions at, you know, the, the next meeting. Well, um, let's talk time frame wise. Uh, how ask. long do you all want to review? And Aaron, do you remember um, approval date at this point? Do you remember any of that? Does it matter? I don't I'm remember. Sure it really matters. In I'd have to get our things. Yeah. We're on track. Um, so how long would you all like to take to review? And we're looking at K-8? Uh, plus algebra. And actually, just to note, when I send you the documents tomorrow, it's going to be K-8. I will add algebra next week. I just didn't get finished algebra yet. So that's going to be okay. next week. Okay. So uh, if you, uh, I don't know if you're thinking June approval, Honestly, it, June, July, August, it doesn't matter. It's It can be approved in any of those. Mm -hmm. um, so if you are in crunch time, I just heard Tracy say that. Lori, you said that in the beginning. 
So if that's the case and you, you know, want to aim for maybe a, a July, I, I don't think that's an issue for us. Um, it's just a matter of making sure we can meet sometime in the summer and, and that Aaron and Heidi are around if we, we need Heidi. Um, cause obviously as long as it's after July 1st, what's that? It's an awful long as it's after July oh, 1st. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So, well, I'm, I'm away and Heidi's getting married. I'm so. getting married on July 1st. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> congratulations. congratulations. <laughs> so, so our next meeting is July 1st. Is that what we just <laughs> <laughs> Where's the location now? <laughs> yeah. I love weddings. <laughs> yeah. Um, that's up to you. I mean, uh, that's uh, Tracy and Laura. Do, do you, you want like, uh, because I'll have Brenda try and schedule it out so we can, you know, the earlier we know, especially if it's summer work that everybody well, knows and we can make sure we don't, you know, we're working around that. If you think that we can do it in June, um, we could try and do that before break, too, if that, <laughs> if that works. To, all right. I just, so we need to have another meeting, just curriculum after we've read it. That's like our next meeting. Correct. And then it needs to go to the whole board. So right. when, when you're talking about June, is is that like going to the whole board? Like so what I read it like good, I, yeah, good question. So this is for uh, uh an uh, I'll say a, an appropriate timeline for approval. Um if we did an August approval by full board, we really need to give it to them in July. Right. Um, which would mean that we're presenting the high level overview at the July board meeting, which means you need to make sure your work is done, um, review edits and you're ready to send it um, at some point in June. Um, Cause they're not gonna get the documents really before that July board meeting. It's just the high level. And then we, we give them to them the next day and they'll have a, a month. Um, so can we, could we, is that enough time? I mean, it's probably six weeks, maybe I think something like that, five or six weeks. Um, it'll get you through some of that crunch time and maybe we can meet sometime in June. Does that work? That sounds, that sounds good. I, I was going to ask for three weeks. So, <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, and then it becomes, honestly, Laura, it becomes crunch time for us too. It's yeah, you know, I know. It's like when I, when I breathe, then, then it's hitting, hitting the right. K-12. So, um, Ann and Tracy, is that okay for you? Maybe, we can look for at the first full week in June. That works for me. And then okay. even if and if we're ready then and things are good and you want to make the recommendation, we could potentially even put it on the June board meeting if we wanted to. I good. think that's I think that's a good idea to give everybody else two months. If we could put it if we could try to get it on the June board meeting and then we could do it also before Heidi's wedding. And then um, you know, and then they would have two months to read it, which I think in the summertime is good because yeah. people aren't as um, organized and about things like that. Fair enough. Um, and do we I'll have any to... other curricula or is this our? Oh, we still have okay. arts and social, social studies and... is next. And then, okay. yeah. Social studies, okay. Social studies will be the next bigger one, yeah. Okay, very good. Boy, you're amazing. Aaron. <laughs> you just keep pumping them out. <laughs> Thank you. You're amazing. Yeah. What, what would Thank we you. do without you? <laughs> what we had been doing for the past few years, right? Before, right? Remember that statement if there's a recommendation in the future. <laughs> yes. Okay. <laughs> um, so I'll try and have Brenda schedule something for June 5th or 6th around that. Um, and then obviously in the, you don't have to wait for that meeting. If you have some simple edits or things like that, please email Erin ahead of time. She can fix things as we go, which is significantly easier, um, okay. especially if we're going to try and move it to the full board in that June meeting. So if you have any of those edit things, do that in advance. If you, if it's a discussion point, you can let her know, but let's have that discussion as a group uh, that in that early June meeting. Okay. Laura, right. as you, Laura, as you read it, you're going to get, there's so, the upper grades have so many perfect segues to science. <laughs> well, I just, <laughs> I love, I mean, I love the whole inquiry-based math, which, I mean, that's something that you're really going to need to explain because it's mm -hmm. foreign to most people. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. 
the know, whole concept it, of fluency, just that is fo foreign to people. Yeah. Like to actually understand the concepts, not just memorize how to do something. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Okay. And the flexibility, the yeah. flexibility of the thinking. Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> All right, well, Tracy, you get, a, you get to watch a recording if you want to. <laughs> Thanks for jumping in. Um, and I'll have Brenda reach out to everybody and try and schedule something that first full week of June. All right. Sounds good. Okay. All right. Thank you very much, Katie and Aaron. Yes, yeah, thank, thank you. you. Yeah, thank you. Okay. All right, it's 4.23 p.m. And have a wonderful rest of your day. Go enjoy the sunshine. It's beautiful out there. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Bye. Thanks all. Bye.